Hey everyone, Lou Clark here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you five ways that teens can put more money in their pocket and keep it there. But before I get started, please make sure to check out the description below because I have filled it with some really awesome links, including the What's Your Money Superpower free quiz that helps you to create your money muscles because it comes with a free PDF based on your money magnetism. Really excited. Make sure you check that out. Before we get started, I just want to let you know, I'm talking to the teens today. So if you're not a teen, you can pretend you are one and use these methods, these ways to put money in your pocket and keep it there or share it with a teen or even a young child. All right, let's get started. Number one, when your friends and family ask you what you want for a gift on your birthday or Christmas or any other special occasion, ask them if it would be okay if they could give you cash. And you can explain to them why. It's not like you wanna just go buy a hoverboard, not that they exist, but you know what I mean. Just say to them, you know what? I would really love it if it was possible instead of you buying me a gift that you would gift me the cash because I'm saving up for school. I'm saving up for college. I'm saving up for a down payment on my house. Something like that. People will be more apt to give you money knowing you're not going to blow it. At Christmas, we give all four of our sons cash with a couple little gifts. And normally I hide the cash in the gifts and that's really the only reason why they get little gifts. But that cash is now working for them. Whether they invested it in an asset such as a computer that they're doing their schoolwork on or whether they put it in an investment or whether it's sitting in a piggy bank, that money is there. They can actually do something with it. Whereas if someone gives you, I don't know, a sweatshirt it's not like that can, there's no ROI on this. It's nice to have a sweatshirt. Letting your friends and family know that you want cash as a gift for your special occasions and the reason why you want it is the most important. That way they don't think, wow, that kid's greedy. He just wants cash. This is why I want it and this is what I'm going to do with it. That is one of the best ways to get cash for special occasions. Now, when you get the cash from your special occasions, I recommend putting some of it away. Whether you're putting it in a piggy bank or an investment account, put some of it away. Some to spend, some to put away. I actually would put like a lot more than what you're going to spend away. Number two, go through your personal items, whether it is toys, clothes, video games, tchotchkes, like bubble heads, whatever it is, go through everything you own and anything that you are not using or wanting, ask for permission from your parents to see if you can put those items up on a marketplace online, like Facebook. Sell the items you no longer use. Make space for the new. Make space to grow. And the money that you get from selling your items, same thing. You're going to keep a little to play with and you're going to put a lot away in one of your piggy banks. This is one of the best ideas that my kids who are teenagers have had. They do a lot of selling on Facebook marketplace and the money they're putting into their pocket is unbelievable. Like, man, we weren't even allowed to have yard sales or garage sales when I was younger. And the kids are like having a full-time yard sale or garage sale on Facebook. So it's a great way to turn stuff that you no longer want, need, or use into some liquid cash that you can then put away and have it working for you. But remember, ask your parents for permission. Please don't go and sell your PS4 and your parents are like, what did you do? And you're like, well, Lou's video said, I'm telling you, you cannot use this video as I was told to do this. This is not your permission. You have to talk to your parents or your guardians before you sell anything. And if they're like, why do you want to sell your stuff? Say to them, because I want cash to start working for me. I want to start saving for my future. And don't worry, they're probably going to look at you really weirdly, but they'll be very proud. And chances are they're going to be like, well, how much are you going to keep? How much are you going to spend? Whatever you tell them. If you're like, I'm going to keep 25% and put 75% away of everything that I get from selling, then you have to stick to that. This is integrity, not just to your parents, but to yourself. So look around your space, 
find the items you no longer need, use, or want, ask permission, and get those things out of your house and make some quick cash for them. Number three, my kids use this one, it's great. You can go to garage sales, pick up hot ticket items, pay like nothing for them because someone wants to get rid of their junk, but you come home and you put it up on an online marketplace for more money. So let's say you buy like a Spider-Man coffee mug for 50 cents. You go home, put it on your marketplace for $5. People will buy it because they're looking for that item. You almost become like a item hunter for those people who are looking for those items. We've done this in past summers and it was really cool to see how much money we could actually bring in. Now, don't get too fancy with this. Don't get into the place where you're like looking at antique things and trying to put them up. People don't want that. Here, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. This is so cool. So this is Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V's website. And this one, I don't know why it brings up, I don't like where he has his banners because you can't read what it is. But this one is called Gar Garage Sale Flipping because I can see the name right here in the title. So if I will put this in the link below, but he actually tells you how to do it. Search for a townwide garage sale. I'm telling you, that's what we did. We went to small towns. And if you're a teenager, you're like, but I don't drive. Talk to an older sibling or a parent and be like, can we spend Saturday morning together? I'll buy you a coffee or I'll buy you breakfast, but I want to go garage sailing. And they're like, why? What do you want to do that for? And you can say, because I'm going to find really great items and I'm going to flip them on Facebook marketplace and make some money to put in my pocket. So you can go through here. Gary's got some uh, points here for you. So for example, he purchased these mugs for $5. He projects they sell for 20. Uh, let's go to another one. Here's another one. I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what that thing is. Um, but he projected, uh, sorry, he bought it for eight and it's projected to sell for $80. So this item is the kind of product you'd put on Facebook marketplace and wait for a collector to come and purchase it. I bought it for $8 and relisted it for 80. And he tells you also what to look for. See, missed, missed opportunity. He didn't pick it up. He should have. Stuffed animals go crazy. So you can go through here and you can see he paid $2 for this phone. He listed it for 15. Like you can guys go through, like, look at this. This is the total for the weekend. It takes a little elbow grease, but it's fun. And you could even in your space, hey, because you cleaned out all the things you don't need, want, or use in your room anymore, now you have a place to set the items that you buy while they're being sold on Marketplace. So use yard sales, garage sales to fund putting money in your pocket. And again, figure out your percentage. What are you going to take to play and how much are you going to put away? My advice, don't ever put away 100% because you'll start resenting the actual process because you don't actually get anything to play with. So give yourself a little bit to play and put the rest away. And I didn't mean to rhyme, but I did. Number four. The world thinks I should tell you, go get a part-time job. And if you have a part-time job, that is amazing. Keep growing in your job, leveling up. Don't stay where you're at and do everything we've talked about already to put extra cash in your pocket. But if you're thinking about getting a part-time job, why not look at a side hustle? Why not look at ways you could build your own business as a teenager that will put cash in your pocket. It could be cutting grass. It could be landscaping. It could be washing cars, walking dogs, a newspaper route, selling bikes, thinking about all these different ones. Like there are so many different ways you could start a side hustle. My one son goes around to all the different thrift shops and he buys the branded clothing. He then brings it home and he sells it online. And he does pretty good. Now, he also has a part-time job. So what he does is all of his money for his part-time job goes into savings. And everything that he's making on the side with this hustle is his spending. So think about how you could start a side hustle. And number three is really a side hustle. But some people are a little like, I don't know if I want to do garage sales. There's so many different things you could do. You could go around and wash people's windows. You could do that. You could... 
I don't know, go to people's house and pick up dog poop. I'm telling you, people will pay for that. It's a gross job, but you can make some real good bank. Get yourself a part-time job or a side hustle. And again, look at the percentage you're going to play with versus the percentage you're going to put away. Number five, this is how you keep all of your money in your pocket. I recommend no matter how money gets in your pocket, whether it's from Christmas, birthday, special occasions, gifts, selling the things that you no longer want, need, or care to have, garage selling, part-time job, side hustle, you put at least 50 to 75% away. While you're building this habit, use a piggy bank. Just put it away. You can't see it. You are creating a habit around how you work with your money. Use this time as a teenager to get your money thing right. And if you do, chances are you will really never have to think about money, stress about money, wonder where it's come from, because you built these habits as a teenager. This is what I would do if I could go back. So my mission here today is to help the teens so that they can grow and mature in such great mindset around money and have financial freedom. If you take these five steps, these five ways of how to put money in your pocket and keep it there, I promise you it will become a habit that you'll take into your future on this journey of life. And let me say, your future self, like when you get to 60, 65, you will thank yourself for what you did as a teenager with money. I invite you to get this right now. Don't reinvent the wheel when you're 30 and 40 trying to figure out how you're going to retire. Please, if there's one thing someone takes from my YouTube channel, It's to learn these steps as a teenager. It's unbelievable what these habits, along with compounding interest and other investments that you make in the next 10 to 15 years, it is unbelievable how they will change your life from the age 40 and up. And me being a 41 year old, I can tell you life started at the age of 40. And man, do I wish I had a lot more money than I have. Do I have a lot of money? Yeah, but I want more. I just, I wish if I could go back, if I could just wave that magic wand. I personally can't for me. I can for our kids and I can for you by sharing this with you today. So please take something from this video and do something to make your future self thank you. And I'd love to hear from you. So drop something in the comments below telling me your takeaway, your aha. What are you doing? What are you going to do? What ideas do you have? This YouTube channel is a community and I will respond to every comment that I receive. So I want you to go and impact your future today. Lou Clark, until next time, saying your future is in your hands. What are you going to do with it?